Welcome to Bladed Tech Musings. I'm your host, Bladed Tech. The Texas Instruments Model TI-99 evokes images of yet another calculator and a long line of successful and even iconic calculators from the electronics giant. TI has been making calculators for almost 50 years, so it stands to reason there's a TI model for almost every number between 1 and 100, and that the TI-99 is one of those models. After all, there is a TI-85 graphing calculator, a TI-89 premium scientific calculator, a TI-92 personal computing assistant, a TI-95 programmable scientific calculator, and even a TI-108 adding calculator. So the TI-99 is yet another entry among Texas Instruments line of specialist calculators, right? Actually, it isn't. The TI-99 is a personal computer. That's right. Texas Instruments built a consumer personal computer just once during the appliance computer era of 1976 to 1981. Looking for a powerful home computer? This is the one. Texas Instruments Home Computer. With 16K memory, it can take you a long way. The home computer from Texas Instruments. This is the one. The TI-99 was Texas Instruments power play in the consumer PC market against Commodore, Apple, and Tandy. The company figured its technical advantage in microprocessors and its corporate deep pockets would work just as well in appliance PCs as it did for calculators, a niche where TI has successfully put out of business every other competitor other than HP. But this time the tables were turned on Texas Instruments, and after losing over a half a billion dollars in 1984 money, a truly stupendous sum, the company threw in the towel and exited the market. Let's take a look at the TI-99 and explore what happened. Acquiring a TI-99 was no trouble, as Texas Instruments built and shipped 2.8 million copies from 1979 to 1984, some as the TI-99-4 and the rest as the TI-99-4A. Of course, one can't find any TI-99s in thrift shops, as there is little demand for used 1970s era proprietary gaming and computing consoles. But as is usual, eBay has more than its share of the computers. Pricing for a working unit is anywhere from $50 to $150, and more if you want some of the hard-to-find accessories. This unit came in its original retail box and original interior packaging. Texas Instruments provided a full set of keyboard overlays for the function keys. The foam inner packaging contained the actual computer and some loose documentation. It was clear that this packaging did not include the operation manual which had been removed. The loose documentation concerned the game controllers, which were not included in this particular arrangement, interference with the pre-1970 color televisions by the TI-99 circuitry, and variations in provided AC adapters. Also in the loose documentation was a subscription form for 99er Home Computer Magazine. Interestingly, the magazine was not published by Texas Instruments. An independent publisher produced the magazine from May of 1981 to November of 1983, or just before the final sell-off and discontinuance of the TI-99. One year, or 12 issues, cost $25. A separate cardboard sleeve was next to the foam shell for the computer, ostensibly for the AC adapter and video cable, which was missing. That made a total of three missing items from the box. It is common for a lot of eBay sellers to break down a full box into parts and sell them off individually, something that might have happened in this case. I had bought this unit 10 months before this video was shot, so it wasn't possible to check the listing. 
thus with some annoyance, I ordered replacements for the missing manual, AC adapter, and video cable. The computer itself was in reasonably good shape, although the top cover had popped a bracket and bulged slightly, and something was rattling inside the case. Hopefully this was not an indication that the unit would be defective or broken, something the seller did not reveal in the listing. It is caveat emptor on eBay for vintage electronics, as most sellers don't even bother to verify operation or to say one way or another, figuring if the buyer was stupid enough to want a 40-year-old electronic device, they must know what they're doing. After inventorying what was missing from the stripped original packaging, I ordered the TI-99 user's reference guide, the power supply, and both a composite video cable and a 75 ohm video adapter. The user's reference guide was pretty beefy, with plenty of programming tips for the TI-99. It was no substitute for the original owner's manual, however, as unit navigation details were sparse in the guide. The 75 ohm adapter allows the user to connect a TI-99 to a television instead of a monitor, albeit at least a television with a UHF connector. You'll need a TV manufactured before 2008 to use this connector, as analog TV broadcasts were terminated in June of 2009. The TI-99 AC adapter is heavy and bulky, as most transformers are from this era, but it has the proprietary connector the TI-99 uses. Finally, we have the composite video adapter, which allows us to connect to a monitor that uses those inputs, or a TV that includes composite RCA connectors. The TI-99 was originally sold for about $1,150, which was pretty steep for a consumer product in the late 1970s. This was more than even the pricey Apple II, which sold for about $950, and significantly more than the TRS-80 Model 1, which was $500, monitor included. The TI-99 did not come with a monitor, which had to be purchased separately, or it could be connected to a television. The Commodore VIC-20 was even less, at $300. For a number of reasons, which I will outline shortly, almost no one bought the TI-99 at its list price, so Texas Instruments dropped the price steadily for the next five years. By 1981, it was being sold for $500, and by 1983, it was going for $200 or less. Finally, TI cleared out its remaining inventory during Christmas season of that year, by dropping the price of the base unit to $49. Of course, by then, the TI-99 was no more than an obsolete curiosity, a few available third-party software titles and discontinued support from Texas Instruments. When it was released, the TI-99 was the only consumer personal computer with a 16-bit microprocessor. The microprocessor was also manufactured by Texas Instruments. Competing PCs ran on 8-bit microprocessors. In theory, this meant that the TI-99 had more computing power for software, but in practice this was not the case. This was largely due to the 8-bit bus the TI-99 used for supporting hardware and peripherals. The TI-99 came with a base 16K of RAM, which by 1981 and the introduction of the IBM PC was pretty anemic. A 32 kilobyte expansion card was available to raise the memory to 48K. As with the competition, TI offered peripherals like the 5 inch floppy disk, an I.O. card, a printer, a modem, joysticks, and a tape drive, all for extra cost. The TI-99's graphics, which was supported by another custom TI chip, the TMS-9918, was better than most competing systems, with 32 by 24 characters or 256 by 192 in pixel mode. Either mode supported up to 15 colors, and video was provided through composite output. Texas Instruments offered various optional color monitors during the lifespan of the TI-99. There were about 100 software titles available for the TI-99. This library did not include popular business titles like VisiCalc, WordStar, or Microsoft Basic, but it did feature clones of many of the popular arcade games of the day. In the early 1970s, Texas Instruments wasn't second to market in scientific calculators, or even tenth, but a careful combination of its own intellectual property, practical industrial design, and volume manufacturing prevailed, boosting the company's market share to number one. 
Texas Instruments figured in the late 1970s it could do the same to the consumer personal computer market that it did to the calculator market in 1973. Like the original calculator market, the personal computer market in 1979 was dominated by smaller and less well-funded corporate players. The semiconductor giant was about to find out that a personal computer was not like a calculator. The initial TI-99 model, the TI-99-4, was the most expensive PC on the market. It featured a calculator-style keyboard, a proprietary version of BASIC, and virtually no third-party software. Texas Instruments scrambled to improve the TI-99 and released the TI-99-4A with a more standard-style keyboard and a large number of peripherals in 1981. It still didn't offer compatibility with third-party software, which became an ACU problem when IBM launched its own open architecture PC just before the update to the TI-99. But Texas Instruments' biggest problem was Commodore, which was determined not to get squeezed out by its large arrival a second time. Commodore CEO Jack Trammell ruthlessly cut the price of the VIC-20 each time Texas Instruments lowered the price on its own PC. In 1983, Texas Instruments was fighting a two-front battle. On one front was the Commodore VIC-20, and on the other was the IBM PC. Like Tandy did with the TRS-80 Model 2000, TI released an incompatible IBM clone called the Professional Computer. And like Tandy's doomed Model 2000, the Professional Computer slid into obscurity. By 1984, a tide of red ink was flooding Texas Instruments books like the elevator lobby of the Overlook Hotel and the movie The Shining. The company had outlasted Tramiel's tenure at Commodore, but both the accelerating PC industry and shareholder anger staggered the proud electronics giant and it finally threw in the towel on personal computers. I hope you enjoyed this latest episode on the appliance computer era of 1970s and 1980s and the TI-99. If so, click that like button. Let us know that you want more of these types of episodes by clicking the subscribe button. Activating the bell icon will also make sure that you receive notifications of new episodes. Links to material related to this video, the VTM channel, Texas Instruments, and the TI-99 can be found below. Save the link to our Instagram account so you can get early updates to our channel. You will find link windows on the left of this video to other episodes. Thanks for watching.